Welcome back. You are watching Global Eye. We're discussing the geopolitics of semiconductors and what India and US can do together and what possibly Taiwan can do as well. We still have with us Ajit Barocha, President and CEO of Semiconductor Equipment and Materials, Paul Shaw, Vice President and Director of Studies at Center for New American Security, and Jeffrey Bean, Program Manager, Tech Policy at ORF America. Paul, if I could come with you, uh, do you see certain points where the CHIPS Act and the Semicon policy of India to promote semiconductor manufacturing can complement each other? Oh, absolutely. The U.S. and India both have a shared interest in growing India's role in the semiconductor industry at a number of places, whether that's in fabrication, in making the chips, in design, in the advanced testing and packaging that comes to assemble the chips and put them together, and in the manufacturing of finished electronic devices, where right now China dominates the market supply chain for uh, manufacturing these devices. And so a lot of electronics right now, they might be you know, chips that are designed in the US, they're made in Taiwan, and then they're assembled in China. And China has an outsized role in the supply chains. And we've seen over the last couple of years how much that's a risk, how much being dependent on a country where you don't trust them, you know, it's not clear if you have these vulnerabilities, how China might weaponize that. That's not in uh, any of our country's interests. So finding ways to work together to grow India's role in the semiconductor supply chain is vitally important. And it's certainly a priority for the United States. Right. Uh, but Jeff, is it really worthwhile? Because the entire urgency around semiconductors came with COVID-19 when we suddenly realized that uh, there was a surge in demand for electronics and we have fallen gravely short of semiconductors. But considering India does not have any ecosystem for semiconductors just yet, where can India complement United States plans for semiconductor manufacturing? And can India really play a big role in global manufacturing of semiconductors in the global value chain. Uh, thank you, Parichit. Uh, I think from an outsider's perspective, uh, as an analyst, on the, the industry side, the challenge is that India faces competition from around the world. Everyone has a, a CHIPS Act, uh, it seems, in place, of course, Europe, Korea, the United States as well. But India does have some advantages, as, as Paul mentioned. Uh, first off, it's in U.S. government interest to ensure that there is resiliency and redundancy among like-minded partners and allies in the supply chain. Uh, in addition to that, it's worth noting that India has a significant advantage with respect to design talent. Most of the major fabulous companies, that is, companies that design chips but don't manufacture them, have offices in, in India and Bangalore and other locations to facilitate and draw on the, the talent that exists with respect to chip design. It is true that if you're looking at the efforts of the India Semiconductor Mission in their effort to, to move India up the value chain, I think it's clear that the center and certain uh, states are very serious this time around about trying to draw a, advanced manufacturing capability for semiconductors into India. But there are challenges, and just globally, uh, around the world, as private sector firms are the ones that take these decisions, it's a highly capitally intensive industry with billions of dollars required to set up a fab uh, or a back-end facility. And these companies have to take hard decisions and look at, do you have stable electricity supplies? Is there access to clean water and redundancy in both of these areas? What does the taxation regime look like? What is the regulatory environment like? Are there clusters of universities training electrical engineers and material scientists, as well as other related companies? These things take a great deal of time to set up. So I think for, for India, the, the key is going to be to secure the first mover and, and try and establish one or two of these clusters. But it's a long process. It's a long process. Ajit Manocha, coming to you, uh, India and Un United States have signed a memorandum of understanding on semiconductors during Gina Raimondo's recent visit. Very little is known about how this will really work out. Uh, do we know the nitty gritties of this MOU? Not really. Uh, we don't know the nitty gritties, but I think the big picture is very clear. I think uh, my colleagues Paul and Jeffrey have articulated the role India can play and India should play. And I think SEMI brings uh, yet another dimension. SEMI is a 50-some years old uh, uh, India uh, trade association where we bring the ecosystem into the countries 
uh, who need to grow. And uh, we enable the ecosystem. And I think my recent discussions with the government of India, especially with the uh, Honorable Minister uh, Ashwini Vaishnav and uh, Rajiv Chandra Shekharji, uh, we have uh, outlined how SEMI can play a role to bring the ecosystem into India. Uh, like we have uh, various events uh, held by SEMI in uh, like-minded countries uh, like Japan, uh, uh, South Korea, uh, Europe, uh, USA, of course. And we are planning on bringing a similar kind of SEMICON conference into India in 24. And that will actually bring the entire ecosystem uh, for networking and for also supporting India's uh, new projects, as, uh, as uh, Jeffrey mentioned, that we need to see the first or two, first one, a couple of new companies to come in. And we need to play a role to support them to make sure they are very successful uh, and uh, first time right. So I think that's the way, role where Sammy will play and will make this a success. Whatever the MOU contents are, well, I think we're gonna build upon that. And uh, I think the assistant secretary said mm. that the details are being worked out. And I'm pretty sure that in the coming weeks uh, we'll be involved in those uh, planning uh, discussions with the Department of Commerce and the Indian government. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you, since the Indian government announced the semicon policy, uh, we've not seen too much really taking off the ground when it comes to uh, actual work on the ground. Yes, a few companies have signed joint ventures, announced plans, but we've not really seen things uh, moving uh, as such as far as actual groundwork goes, Mr. Manocha. Uh, do you think India needs to do more? Are investors right now a little wary, a little hesitant about the India semiconductor story, Mr. Manocha? Well, you know, I would say one thing that in the past there were some uh, from, uh, missed opportunities where India announced the paths and didn't happen. But I think this policy, the, for the first time, I feel this policy is very well thought of. It underpins the, the various comments and inputs I've been giving, and uh, I think India has been receiving from other uh, semiconductor veterans as well. I, I, I'm very pleased with the progress that's going on under the India Semiconductor Mission. I am under NDA, so I cannot really reveal uh, any of the details, but the couple of uh, applicants which we are uh, in the final stages of reviewing I think I am very pleased that the business plan looks very uh, convincing and compelling. And uh, again, the next question will be how to make it implemented. Of course, uh, before that, government of India has to do its own due diligence to make sure that they qualify in uh, all other uh, uh, all other issues that they have, they have to deal with. Especially the recent news about uh, uh, some of the financial issues with some of the companies. So, but as far as business plan is concerned. I'm feeling very, very, very pleased with the, with the, with the what I've seen so far. And the next question will be execution plan or implementation plan. Here we'll need a lot of uh, involvement of the government of India to make sure that we can bring the right kind of uh, support from outside, you, uh, outside India to make it a success. Hmm. Right. Uh, Paul, coming back to you, uh, Taiwan, I think a question that Taiwan is asking, what will be Taiwan's role when it comes to U.S. global alliances on semiconductors, including the alliance with India for that matter? Uh, do you think from your conversations, your understanding of the U.S. government, do they have a role for Taiwan? Will Taiwan have a role to play between U.S. and India when it comes to that MOU? Well, Taiwan, I think, is under any scenario going to continue to be the leading hub of semiconductor manufacturing, particularly for the most leading edge chips. And that's not going to change. The lead that TSMC has over other companies is remarkable. Um, really, other than Samsung and Korea, there's really no other country, uh, companies that are competing up at the leading edge. And so I don't think that's going to change. We've begun to see TSMC look to diversify some of its manufacturing. They're placing um, a close to leading edge fab in the United States. So that's, I think, an important consideration. And they are playing a very active role, both the company and the Taiwanese government, in working with other countries, the United States, uh, Japan, the Netherlands, others, including uh, there's a lot of opportunity for them to work with India. As we think about diversifying supply chains, creating more resiliency, but I don't think there's any scenario in which Taiwan doesn't continue to be 
a really important focal point for leading edge semiconductor manufacturing in the future. Right, uh, Jeffrey, uh, we've run out of time, but very briefly, can Taiwan play a role in helping India skill its workforce when it comes to semiconductor manufacturing? Yeah, I, I agree with Paul. There's not going to be a scenario where Taiwan isn't uh, at the forefront of the semiconductor ecosystem. With respect to the, the plans that India has put forward, uh, I think there is a potential role for collaboration and, and training. Of course, uh, my understanding is of the bids that have been publicly discussed, uh, Vedanta, uh, Foxconn, of course, Foxconn is a, is a Taiwanese uh, and Chinese company, uh, but doesn't have a great deal of semiconductor in, uh, expertise. So the challenge will be, I think, for all of these bids, can they attract a leading uh, semiconductor uh, firm that has real expertise and know-how in uh, manufacturing? On the training side, I think there are opportunities for collaboration uh, between the uh, between TechGrow and other entities within India uh, on the island. And of course, Taiwan has all the things that we just discussed in terms of clustering effect, in terms of science parks and the, the know-how, uh, the infrastructure in place. So that expertise is something that I think the government is willing to share with like-minded uh, partners and allies. All right, uh, we run out of time, but uh, Jeffrey Bean, Paul Shaw, and Ajit Manocha, thank you very much for joining us here on Global Eye, giving us your view on India-US uh, collaboration on semiconductors and uh, US attempts to form uh, alliances on chips to really have strong supply chains. That's all we have time for on Global Eye. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.